So we are live now to the session of the aquaponics. Yeah, and it's glad to have Google once again in the YouTube channel. Yeah, I think I'll stick to the name Google so that's not pronouncing the local one. So we we'll just stick to the name Google. Yeah, so the that's, that's fine by me. Yeah, so the aquaponics uh, business or the aquaponics sector, it's a, it's a large sector. You go online and check about the aquaponics sector, you will see a lot of information, a lot of research that has been done surrounding that space. Now, over here in Africa, we have different persons that are venturing into the aquaponics, the smart system that we have through ponies. So maybe in this video today, we are going to be looking at what is aquaponics generally, what is smart farming, what is hydroponics, is there a link between the hydroponics and the aquaponics, and what are the disadvantages, and also what are the advantages today. So like I said, we have Google once again in this channel, she's an influencer, farmer on Twitter, that holds the Twitter space. So she will be going to be guiding us on what are the requirements to start up in the aquaponics business. What do you need to know? What are the knowledge or what are the skills you need to acquire? What are the materials you need to get? Now, what are the advantages to doing it and what are the disadvantages? And also, in a large-scale aquaponics system, so what should we expect? So that is some of the stuff we are going to be highlighting in the session tonight. So back to you, Google. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm very happy to be joining you here live from South Africa. It's a pleasure once again to be joining Farm Enterprise on his YouTube channel. It's always exciting to learn from fellow Africans in terms of what smart farming is about. And I'm happy to share the little that I know tonight um, on just the basics and um, you know commercial aquaponics and, and how it is uh, a lucrative business into venturing in and um, yeah um yeah you know it's 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 something that i feel like uh, a lot of farmers aren't really aware of in terms of um the possibilities of being a smart farmer i think i get yeah. questions um around what is smart farming what does it mean to be a smart farmer and the moment i mention technology and iot systems and you know having um a system running consistently yeah. Uh, people get a bit frightened. People, yeah. um, you know, are, are thinking um, high tech and something that's unattainable to them. Uh, so it's it's really something that I would I'm happy to to start sharing more of the little that I know to help change the narrative. Really to set people, um, you know, in the forefront of a changing industry because farming is yeah. growing. Farming now requires you to make smarter decisions. Farming now requires you to be um, low risk and high returns. So yeah, looking forward to, to your questions and uh, commentary, Kenneth. Okay, so as we proceed, now you made mention of the IoT stuff and you know, when people have this idea of this is tech, they feel it's more how to do with coding, writing scripts, learning some new maybe languages and they might be a bit threatened to go into it. And also, now what are the other, we like to say, apart from the IoT or the tech areas, what are, we like to say, the other turn off most people get in the first instance once you tell them about the aquaponics system? I'm um, sorry, can you please repeat your question? Sorry, you are breaking up okay. a bit. I'm, I'm trying okay. to hear you. Yeah, so I said now in the aquaponics system, you may mention about the IoT, now which has to do with some people feel it has to do with maybe you, you running the code or doing some tech stuff all the whole uh, stuff about the deck. Now, apart from that, is there any other challenges? People at the first mention of the smart farming aquaponics that scare people from venturing into it. Um, are you asking me of other challenges involved yeah, in aquaponics? Yeah, that make persons not want to go into the aquaponics smart farming system. Okay, um, so what I got from your question is, um, you know, people might not want to get into aquaponics uh, yeah. because of some challenges. And you're asking me what those challenges are. Yeah, what are, what are the first challenges people just get into? Most times these challenges might not be real. Now, what are these challenges might not be real? It might not be maybe what they feel might be a challenge. So what are the initial stages that once you tell somebody aquaponics, smart farming, that scare people away from the whole system? 
Some of the challenges, okay. Um, I really believe that the first challenge that scares a lot of people into maybe venturing into smart farming or aquaponics um, specifically is how much does it cost? You know, um, people are actually very concerned about the initial capex that you need to invest in the system. And um, I think there's also a skill shortage in terms of um, teaching people what smart farming is. So already people judge actually what they don't have any understanding of or have any skill sets of. So as they're worried about the money, they're worried about the skills, um, they're also worried about, um, you know, just the African climate when it comes to technology, uh, reliability of our connections, uh, our connectivity, our uh, load shedding here in South Africa specifically. So people are like, yeah, you know, you're talking about a system, you're talking about it's running for you day in, day out, you know, you, what how much electricity does it use and all of those questions is something that we need to answer on a technical level and i think those are the most technical uh questions that i get to see and experience um every time i speak about smart farming that's what people are mostly interested in and those are the challenges that yes we do face as smart farmers and um i can get into how you solve them but i think the basics of what people might deem a technical challenge is yeah. connectivity, is uh, uh, knowledge, skills, and also um, the amount of investment that needs to be made. Okay, thank you very much for that. Now, before we proceed, we just want to know what is the aquaponics system all about? Now, you mentioned some of the challenges. I was someone hearing for the first time. I'm hearing about the aquaponics system. I've seen the challenges. I want to know what is the aquaponics system all about? Oh yeah, that's that's the easy, that's the easiest question to answer. <laughs> so aquaponics is basically um, a symbiotic relationship between fish and plants. So um, we all know that plants need the the four basic necessities, which is light, water, uh, nutrients, and um, um, you know a buffer or a structure, which would be the soil. So when it comes to aquaponics, we 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 take into consideration those factors that a plant needs and we put all the plants in, in, in a place where we submerge them in water. So instead of the soil, there's water. Um, the principles are still the same, but now water is our medium, right? And then how the fish get involved here and how the relationship balance itself out is that the fish give us the nutrients in the water. So it's like a cycle of life. Yeah. So the soil usually is packed with all your organic nutrients, your minerals, your organic matter. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it helps the plant grow. And there's all living organized, uh, organisms sorry, that uh, facilitate that. With aquaponics, you are mimicking that natural system. Yeah. So you have to put in all the, the nutrients in the water um, and you get those nutrients from where? Your fish. So it's like a plumbing system, you know, you, you pump out the fish waste and you put in the water where your plants are going to grow. So um, that is what essentially aquaponics is. It's a new way of farming. Um, people always get shocked. I'm like, what? You know, you're growing food in water. What's that? So in a nutshell, that's aquaponics. Thank you very much for that. Now, we've heard about hydroponics too. The aquaponics and the hydroponics system. So, is there a difference between the hydroponics and the aquaponics system? There is a difference. Uh, there is definitely a difference. So aquaponics actually uh, borrows um, the ponics from hydroponics. So hydroponics is just focusing on the plants, just growing your plants in water and dosing it with minerals and nutrients. Remember now you're not getting fish waste water, which has its own uh, nutrition, which okay. we, we can go um, deeper into as to what those nutrition are. But with hydroponics, you know, you're growing in water, uh, nothing can grow with water alone. So you need to be dosing with nutrients. And um, that is something that you, you need to understand and make sure you, you dose the right amount, depending what you grow. Um, so that's hydroponics. When you focus on the plants, growing it in water. And aquaponics now has the aqua, I think, related more onto the fish mm -hmm. side. So the aquaponics yeah, is still a hydroponic system, but you are getting your nutrients, primarily your nitrogen, from our fish. 
So our fish excrete ammonia and that gets broken down by uh, bacteria and it uh, it gets absorbed by your plants as um, from nitrites, nitrates till nitrogen. So that's how you get your, your nutrients from your aquaponics to your hydroponics. So long story short, hydroponics, you go in water. Aquaponics, you go in water with the fish included. So, but hydroponics with water in absence of the fish and the aquaponics in water with the presence of the fish. So Exactly that. So, yeah, so the aquaponics may be a bit, uh, let's like say, it saves you more. Because we are doing like two things, the plant and also the fish. In the aquaponics area, we are just doing only the plant. Exactly. Now, the, yeah. Yeah, the fishes, the plant. Now, are there some species of fishes that work in this system, or is all the species of fishes can be cultured in this system and also for the plants? Uh, sorry, please repeat that, Kenneth. Okay. I said now the hydroponic system and the aquaponic system. Now, in the aquaponics, we, we know that we have the fishes and we have the plant working yes. together like a cycle. Now, yes. in the area of the fishes, are there specific species of fishes that works in this system or all fishes can do well in the aquaponic system? Same as also for the plant. Is it all the plants that can grow well in the hydroponic system or the aquaponic system? Yes. So no, uh, long, um, the answer is no. You can't just um, you know, bring a shark and put it in your tank <laughs> and expect, <laughs> expect um, it, it to be a symbiotic relationship. So yeah. um, you, primarily we get uh, fresh water fish that we use. Um, I, I, we specifically, um, or rather I have experience in tilapia and uh, the Niloticus tilapia, the, the Nile tilapia, that's a species that I'm very much exposed to. And that's what um, I've been working with. Um, but I know that there are other farmers using trouts. Um, I think trout works in, in colder regions, but there are farmers, you know, in Africa who are also um, growing trout. And trout is like, you know, it needs cold water. So that's a that's also another um, interesting dynamic. But you can also use trout. You can use a uh, carp. You can use. I know you're a catfish. Yeah. <laughs> catfish. You can also use. Um, so um, it's it, yeah. So it's it's usually um, you know um, certain type of fish. Koi fish as well. I know some farmers um, have the koi fish going in there for either aesthetic purposes, but koi fish also does well. So um, those are the 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 primary fish that is uh, notably used in um, aquaponics. Um, so I'm, I'm more focused on tilapia because I feel like it's very hardy um, and it's easier to market and sell because of the uh, consumer's culture. You know, everyone wants um, nutrition. Everyone wants um, something that is um, that tastes good, that's fleshy, that's um, also rich in omega acids and um, it's not too fatty. You know, people are health, health conscious these days. So tilapia is easier for us to also market. So uh, I'm happy with tilapia. I know you're into the catfish business, um, but uh, for me, I've worked very uh, well with tilapia. They respond well to to um, different climate changes um, in terms of temp temperature, not climate, sorry, temperature changes. And they also, um, you know, the breeding is is fantastic. Breeding rates are fantastic. Um, and, you know, they they grow uh, reasonably well um, and consistently. And um, the market is looking for tilapia. So that's the experience that I have that I would be happy to share with the viewers. Yeah. So thank you very much. So you made mention of the tilapia fish, the catfish, the core fishes. Now, in a, what about the plants? In the aspect of the plants, what are the plants that do okay. in the Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, I think in South Africa, there's a there's a huge potential in terms of um, starting out smart farming. I think smart farming is slowly taking shape here in South Africa, where people are trying out a lot. They are demoing a lot. They're using their farms as a pilot farm to really understand what can we grow um, in South Africa and um, is it giving us the, the yields that we want? Is it, is it profitable? But primarily, um, smart farmers grow lettuce, leafy greens, mainly lettuce. And by your lettuce, I'm talking 
all your types of lettuce, you know, your cars lettuce, your romaine lettuces, uh, your your frilly lettuces, your your cars lettuces, your butter lettuces. So lettuce is your main line. If you're gonna be thinking of smart farming, um I highly guarantee that you're going to start with lettuce because it's very easy to grow and it grows beautifully. But farmers are also experimenting with um, chives, um, spring onion, um, mint, uh, baby spinach, you know, baby leaf ranges of anything, uh, rockets, um, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, um, even... Um, well, hydroponics, they do uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite exciting. Um, and the possibility of what you can grow in a smart system is, is really vast. So it's all about your system. It's all about you understanding um, your, your, your system, understanding the nutrients that you need to grow uh, big yields. Because at the end of the day, you don't really want to be growing a, a small size lettuce Whereas, you know, um, you're investing so much in inputs. Let's say you're a hydroponic farmer and you keep buying all your, your, your nutrition. Yeah. You, you'd like your lettuce to at least be able to compete to some extent yeah. with the market. So, um, yeah, so that's primarily what you can grow. Um, and kale as well. Like fresh leafy greens, um, uh, you can't really grow your root vegetables. Uh, but herbs do well with the smart farming systems. And um, yeah, I think it's slowly going to be um, a method that farmers consider if they want to grow herbs specifically, because herbs do very well in uh, smart farming techniques. Okay, so thank you very much. I've mentioned about the lettuce. And as I go, most of the patients I've seen that are into the smart farming system, I see they do a lot of lettuce and grains. Now, is there a market for all these? Products. Absolutely. Um, especially with the herbs. Like I said, I see smart farmers take up the herb industry a lot. Um, and by herbs, I see them getting creative. I see them doing microgreens because it's going to grow so well. I see them doing edible flowers, you know, and really catering to a very niche product um, type of market. But um, with regards to the market for lettuce, there's definitely always a market for lettuce. Um, and that's why um, smart farmers have gone creative. You know, they do types of lettuce. They don't just do your icebergs, the ones that the soil farmers usually grow. You know, they, they do premium um, high value products. So frilly lettuces and um, cars lettuces, beautiful flowery butter lettuces, those do very well. And obviously your market is now gonna be um, of a high-end market or rather you have to chase a high-end market. But in South Africa, I know the aquaponics guys are, are, are trying to really pioneer uh, lettuce. So they have their own lettuce uh, pillow packs, right? So you can grow your beautiful lettuce and have an aquaponic pillow pack that is endorsed by the Cancer Association. And you can sell it at an optimal price because remember, smart farming is, isn't that cheap. You know, um, you have all your expenses such as electricity, running water. You need to make sure that you you have a generator if you are doing it commercially. And um, you know, um, like we in South Africa, there's load shedding. Your system needs to be running twenty four seven. So with all that amount of investment, you kind of need to now position yourself to to be different because you are farming different you know um so i'm glad that that is something that's being pioneered here in south africa where aquaponics people are uh, growing lettuce can now you know purchase these bags that are written aquaponics that are pesticide free you know people are using biologicals they are not using harsh chemicals so it's a premium product and it deserves a premium price so that's something that's happening. It's exciting. Um, it's still in its infancy stages, but I see it definitely taking off in the next few years. Thank you very much. Now, you made mention of something about the premium products and the premium prices. Now, in the hydroponic system, already you, you highlighted it when you were explaining about the nutritional value of uh, the products. Now, is there a difference from the normal farming system where you use the soil to plant the lettuce <coughs> and the one for the aquaponic system is there a difference in the nutrition or are they the same is there a difference in 
the nutrition of the product. The nutrition. Yeah. Um, you know what? That's a very interesting question, and I think it's um, it's you. You know, when you look at an hydroponics, let's let's take it at just the basic level of hydroponics. You are immersing a plant in water and you're ensuring that that plant gets um, their nutritional uptake very easily because you need to look at the structure of the soil. The soil has a topsoil, has, um, you know, parental rock as soon as you, you go down, depending how low you go. But the soil is subsets, you know, and the the plant always needs to grow and stretch out its roots and find nutrients in the soil. That's, that's just how a plant grows. You know, you put it on the ground and um, it still needs to do the work, you know, in terms of growing out its roots so that it can absorb as much oxygen, as much water and as much nutri nutrition. So what you're doing in water is that, um, you know, the, the nutrients are readily available and you will see the root structure from a hydroponics uh, for a lettuce, for example, and how the root structure is on a lettuce hydroponically grown plant and a soil lettuce, hydro, um, soil lettuce grown. It's completely different. The roots of a hydroponic um, um, lettuce, for instance, doesn't need to work so hard. And it's the nutrients are readily available to, to, to get into the plant. That is why the growing cycle of a lettuce is much shorter than one who is growing in the soil. Yes. So it's things like that, that you know what, you, you really are giving the plant the best. You're giving the plant the best of the nutrients. You're giving the plant a, a uh, a condition that is um, climate safe. You know, you're growing in a tunnel, uh, you're growing in a greenhouse, you're ensuring that your light intensity, your lux levels are optimum. You know, um, you, you're really giving the plant what it needs when it needs it. And that for me is, is, is fantastic. And on top of that, you're not using any harsh chemicals. You know, you're not... Um, spraying red labels you're using biologicals and you are really you know almost organic i would say so i think that um smart farmers have the challenge of definitely um schooling should i say consumers about the health benefits of their products because at the end of the day this is a new system not not a lot of us know you know why why should we be growing in water not a lot of people know the benefits of growing in water they think it's completely abnormal so in my experience i definitely believe we are providing a fresh healthy pesticide free product every single time that is just filled with nutrition and i definitely believe it's just much fresher much more healthier yeah so thank you very much now, you know, most of the pesticides you use in uh, fertilizers and farming or to kill heads, it has an effect on the human body, like the pulse, resistance, organic pollutants, and some of these issues that have been cancer us over time from research. Now, you made mention about the cycles. Now, the, the farmers have the quicker cycles. Now, does the quicker cycle help to complement the price of the product to give them a competitive edge than the those doing from the cultural system, using the soil. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kenneth. Um, you'll have to repeat your question. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I said now the aquaponic system, because of the, they have a shorter cycle in terms of the product. From yes, growing cycle, the yes. To win, so the harvest time is a shorter cycle. Now, due to this shorter, shorter cycle, do they have an advantage in terms of competitive price with others doing the mechanizing of the soil to do the planting? Or does Absolutely. Absolutely. They have a competitive edge because, um, you know, if, you, if you're giving a plant all that it needs, right, it, it, it does less work. It grows faster, bigger, faster, bigger, faster. You know, so... Um, our competitors that are growing on the ground, it will take them six weeks in summer to grow lettuce, a lettuce head. We have these ideal conditions year in, year out. So we are all rounders. You know, um, in winter, maybe our growth cycle can increase by a week. Instead of four weeks in summer, it becomes five weeks in winter. But we still are 
um, at, at a position where we have our growth cycles limited and reduced because already we're giving the plant so much that it needs in terms of being climate smart. We're not relying on the on the sun that much you know if it's in a greenhouse you have your 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 cooling systems you have your heating systems um everything is there to ensure that this plant grows and it grows beautifully like i said bigger faster bigger faster so definitely it does give you that competitive edge because if you're going to look at your consumers and um and your markets you know they want um fresh product products they want it when they want it um they want lettuce that is fresh that is packaged um um, nicely they want something different so if you're able to to cut down how long it takes your competitors i think that really gives you um that positions you in a place that you are able to really dominate the markets um the only thing that i would say is a challenge is that um you know, you are growing in a greenhouse. You might have maybe 10 of them, for example. You can't really compete with guys that have hectares and hectares and hectares in terms of yields, but you are consistent. And at the end of the day, you know, people want consistency from farmers. You're always providing fresh lettuce. You're always pr providing um, lettuce all year round. People can rely on you. Your growth cycles are shorter. So I definitely believe that it does give you some sort of competition, uh, competitive edge. What we need to work on is the market. You know, um, smart farmers are working tirelessly to ensure that their product is is uh, uh, consistent. I think the market needs to recognize that. Um, there's so much work that gets put in, like I mentioned before, with um, just running running the system with the the, the premium uh, biologicals or natural pro uh, pesticides that we use. I think um, we cannot be having the same price as somebody that's growing in the soil that's using harsh chemicals. So in terms of pricing, we still have a long way to go, but in terms of um, being consistent, we are on the forefront. Yeah, thank, thank you. We are the forefront in the market. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Now, from being consistent means that it would help to reduce the scarcity of products. Now, we know some of these products are a bit seasonal in terms of maybe these are the winter season, it grows. Now, during the next season, you, you, there's a scarcity in that product. So, with the smart farming, can it call the scarcity of products and we get it in and out of season? Yes. I mean, like I said, with smart farming, you grow all year round um, because. Um, at the end of the day, you're growing in a tunnel, you know, you're growing in a, in a structure and um, you, I'm going to use a greenhouse, for example. So if you, if you're lucky enough to have uh, automated greenhouses that, you know, have your, your heating systems and your cooling systems, if you have your pattern fans, if you have your, your natural ventilation um, structure, but the point is that, or you have your glass structure. I recently went to Europe and they're all about glass structures. But um, the point I'm trying to make here is that you're, you have a structure that's not climate dependent. And that really um, helps you as a farmer because you are able to supply spinach in winter. You're able to supply spinach in summer. So, um, you know, when all the farmers can't give um, spinach in, let's say, summer, I mean, in winter, you now have that competitive edge because you are in a climate um, safe structure. That's where you grow your vegetables. Therefore, you are able to grow all year round. You're able to supply the 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 products that might not be available in the market because you have invested in, in, in a system that uh, is smart, is tech savvy. And um, I think that's what people need to understand when they really think about smart farming, that this is a, this is a all year round business. You know, a lot of farmers look at um, um, their business model dependent on seasons, but smart farmers look at it all year round. You know, you can have 10 year projections really and if you have a plastic tunnel when do plastic tunnels expire after 10 years you replace you replace your tunnels so that's the model you think all year round you grow all year round okay now for the smart system if someone that wants to go into the aquaponics system what are the requirements i want to start what are what are the in terms of materials in terms of knowledge in terms of equipment to use so what are the basic requirements for anyone venturing into the smart system okay yeah so i'm 
the, the first thing that you need, honestly speaking, is knowledge. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what people think sometimes, you know, when they think agriculture, they think you just wing it. So they think you just put a seed and everything grows, but there's science, there's science behind uh, growing. There's um, understanding and there's, a lot of um, knowledge that you need. So I would definitely advise farmers to to go shadow a farmer, to watch your YouTube channel, <laughs> you know, um, but have some sort of knowledge when it comes to what it is that you want to venture in before you even, you know, think about raising funds or putting your retirement money in, in, in something. Have some sort of knowledge when it comes to um what you want to grow and where you want to where you want to take this business idea of yours but and the second thing is okay, you sorry, you need the funds okay. yes yes yeah, sure. before you, yeah before you proceed on the second stuff now you talked about the knowledge aspect so is it a defined system or a structure that takes people from okay i want to start the aquaponics system like a school or like a, a center that they can go and maybe learn this system that takes you from starting to the end. So is, is there such within Africa? You know what? Um, I don't think there is a, a place of academia when it comes to smart farming. In I'm going to be region specific in South Africa. And I think that's that's something that's definitely going to start changing in the next few years because there are so many um, smart farmers uh, uh, getting into 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 this industry uh however there is no training available to my knowledge there is no training available where one person can, person can be like hey let me go to this farm because they offer training um but there are aquaponics and hydroponics farmer and farmers in south africa that are selling master classes online or smart oh. tours where you can come see what they are about but to be honest with you i still feel like um you know, smart farming, especially in an African climate, uh, Euro Europeans have been smart farmers pretty much for a long time because they are forced yeah. to be. Um, the the climate requires them to to really think out the box. Yeah. But we are blessed in Africa to have um, you know um, temperatures that are favorable for growing conditions. Yeah. So we are we are still trying to understand smart farming in an African context. You know what I mean? So. I feel that it's still it's it's still on the rise. I know that you can go online and go to the pioneers of smart farming, do a course from offered in Australia online. You can do a course offered in uh, Europe, Germany online. Um, but in South Africa, I'm I I would be lying to people. I can definitely. Um, see it growing but it's not where it needs to be people are still trialing people are still experimenting um so you know is, is the knowledge there is is it the right knowledge you know or is it just the basics you know so um, i'm not sure about that i don't think it's a there's a school that can really help teach you this um so yeah that's to answer your question now um just to get back to your first question as well as to what people need. So yeah, you do need the skills. Um, so try to, like I said, shadow these farmers. Now visit the farmers that are already doing this, you know, see see what that is about. And then my second suggestion would to be to start. Start small, you know. Um, this is a system that you can even design yourself. YouTube has a, a plethora of knowledge of how to design your own hydroponic system at home in your backyards. Most of these guys that are big here in, in, in SA anyway, started in their garages, started in their backyards, you know, because smart farming is system dependent. You know, your smart farm and how you give nutrients is dependent on the capacity of your fish and it's dependent on your size. Mine could be bigger than yours. I could have different requirements. So it's the principles are the same, but how you farm and my needs will be separate from your needs. You know what I mean? So I think uh, the second thing would just do DIYs yourself at home. Um, and, you know, the more you get into it, the more you love it, you'll obviously start now investing money and, um, you know, that's when you'll start um, growing and you'll 
hopefully attract investors and and you know and attract uh, people to really help see your your smart farm to be a commercial success because the beautiful thing about smart farming is that it's low risks it's not like those guys planting in the soil where they have to be climate um, conscious because it could hail today it could rain tomorrow you know it could be extreme weather conditions with smart farming it's it's precise yields are guaranteed it's protected it's climate uh safe so you are bound to attract anyone um to really help you realize your dream if let's say you don't have the capex so it's very attractive um it's a very attractive business model for somebody to be a small smart farmer to be a commercial smart farmer Okay, so now we'll start with uh, the pros and the cons of the smart farming system. And I know you've mentioned some of them in, during the course of the conversation. Now, we'll start with what are the cons or disadvantage of starting in the smart farming system or venturing into the agricultural system that you've seen so far? Okay, I'll start with the pros. The pros of smart farming is that it is uh, shorter growing cycles, like I mentioned, competitive edge in terms of um, your your products because your products are pesticides free, especially if you're doing aquaponics. Um, um, you you will hardly use any chemicals, harsh chemicals, um, if you have aquaponics systems. Uh, that is a that is a RAS system, you know, so that's, um, that means that it's a closed loop system. The water from your fish goes to your plants, then from your plants, it goes back to your fish. So it's like a, a little circle of recirculated water. So you cannot be using harsh chemicals there. So your selling points already with aquaponics is that you are pesticide free. You are using biologicals, you're using something that is safe for your fish and it's safe for your plants. So you spray today, you eat tomorrow the PHR is very low. So that's already a selling point. You know, you can really be um, positioned in an organic, in the organic industry. So um, that's one of the pros. Another pro is that it is uh, low risks, like I said. So it gives you potential to grow and upscale uh, because you're going to be making money guaranteed. Uh, and another pro for smart farming is that it's flexible. A lot of people be like, Google, you know, why smart farming? And I always say flexibility. I, I, I want to be a farmer, but I still want <laughs> my life, you know? Yeah. So can technology work for me, please? So yeah, yeah, technology works for you. It can work for you. Agritech is really, you know, the new way to go. I mean, when you think about your smartphone, you can't do anything without your smartphone. So um, ag agriculture is slowly also taking that position to, to really rely on uh, systems that can help um, us grow foods and ensure food security you know and ensure that we are able to to provide um nutritious wholesome foods to to our communities um and it, it, it creates employment um a, a lot of people think oh you know it's just two hectares you are very small but it's very intensive uh so you need a lot of um people working for you and um it's i, I love the fact that you grow in the industry you learn so much about um plants from a scientific level you're always thinking of new ways to 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 go bigger better smarter you know because we you, you're a smart farmer you know so you smart you you farm smart not hard specifically so it gives us uh, an opportunity to really you know come together brainstorm how to grow the best of the best lettuces how do we increase our yields on our lettuces um you know just have that creativity in terms of agriculture which is really exciting um so those are my pros for now and a con is that it is a bit expensive especially if you're going to do um aquaponics and you're going to do the closed loop system where you want a whole plumbing system that goes from your fish to your um to your plants you know if you're going to breed your own fish as well because you know you don't want any contaminants you don't want to buy other people's fish you want everything to be um handled by yourself to risk um to de-risk by security issues then you need a hatchery you know so there's so much investment that you need to do unfortunately when it comes to aquaponics hydroponics is a bit different the fish aspect is not there uh but it it is capital intensive um and also i think one of the the the, the cons is that it 
you know, it's it, biologicals are not are not fun. <laughs> biologicals yeah, are, are something that's I think quite new in the industry. People are still really understanding it. Um, does it really work? You know, can you be commercial and still be using biologicals? Uh, I know on the farm we've had um, experiences with thrips, thrip damages on our spring onions, on our garlic, on our chi- garlic chives, on our French chives. So understanding biologicals is kind of a con because I feel like the industry isn't where it should be yet, or rather we don't have that support that we need to really um, get on top of pests and diseases. Um, but yeah, the con for me is, is, is that. And the last one is just, um, I guess it falls under, it's capital intensive because I don't know of many smart farmers that are not operating off grid in South Africa. We have an electricity problem. If you're gonna be an aquaponics farmer, your water needs to be running 24 hours. You do, you do not need load shedding problems because fish need oxygen, fish need you to clean their, their systems their their tanks every single day so your system has to be designed in such a way that it is working 24 7 so um those are the cons um but you know at the end of the day like i said if your business model um is 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 focused on smart farming you can somehow mitigate that one you can get away with uh, the capex because you will have a lot of support smart farming is very attractive especially here in south africa everyone is looking at a ways to increase food production um on a limited space you know land is also another issue you know people don't have that land size and but people still want to be farmers urban farmers so yeah yeah there's there's more pros and cons to answer your question yeah so there's more pros than cons so it's it's sustainable yeah types of farming that everyone should venture into now like you mentioned about the sustainability the consistency of the system yeah, but it's with maybe the aquaponic uh, system, the scarcity of food will drastically reduce since it's off season and off season. You're not waiting the season to really harvest a particular kind of crop. Now, you mentioned on the cons about the cost in terms of both the cost of running the generator state, which is a major challenge across Africa, the, the light issues. So, now, are there opportunities in terms of maybe farms or grants? that most of these farmers would be able to assess in terms of scaling up in the aquaponics system. Yeah, um, so yeah, in South Africa, there are a lot of uh, farming grants um, available. You know, you you do you can apply for some sort of um, assistance in terms of buying your inputs uh, specifically. Uh, however, um, I've I've in my experience, I've seen that a lot of people are are really approaching the banks, you know, um, when it comes to support with their farming uh, hydroponics or aquaponics. And reason being is that they, they already have like some sort of setup. Let's say they have maybe one tunnel or two tunnels and they want to upscale. So they approach banks because their business model is already in existence and it is something that they have documented. You know, they were farmers, they, they did... Uh, the the core thing that you have to do when you're a farmer. A lot of people don't keep records of their books. They don't have any data. I don't know why this is still the case, but it, it is a reality. So with smart farming, your currency is your data. You need to be consistently um, keeping records. So a lot of these smart farmers, um, you know, um, keep the, the records of their data. They they can show that their business model works and they have been fortunate enough to approach these uh, financial institutions like your big banks, like your First National Bank or Standard Bank or Net Bank or APSA and have shown them their business model and most of them have had success in terms of getting um, funding. Um, so um, I really think that uh, government should should really be looking at uh, smart farmers as as a way of support because right now there's a lot of opportunities for livestock farmers, there's a lot of opportunities for crop farmers, soil farmers, but I have not seen any for smart farmers. I've seen smart farmers just go the conventional route by going to like banks, but they have been successful and most of them are able to even pay back loans 
grow their system, ensure that their data capturing is smarter by investing in sensors uh, to measure their parameters. So they're now farming smarter and slicker uh, because of loans. But thankfully, because smart farming works, they are able to pay those loans back. So government definitely needs to be doing more in terms of providing grants and um, support. But I think government is also still trying to understand what is the smart farming thing about, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we, we're slowly getting there. Like I said, the more farmers that take up smart farming, the better. You know, the more we are able to really see and prove that this model works, this is the future, honestly. So, you know, everybody is still, so most people like across Africa are still trying to learn the system, learn the model, like you talked about the getting your data. And since the smart system, it's easier to get your data done. Now, like in the normal form system, taking your pH, your oxygen levels, your nitrogen levels, all this can be done manually. way you get the test, start the test. But the smart system, I know maybe there's a sensor that does all these tests at three times. Yeah, like a kid the record of, okay, what are the pH level of the water? What is, so it's easier if there is a challenge to know, okay, this is the oxygen level is low, or the uh, pH level is high, it's acidic, and that would affect either the fishes or also the yeah. plant. So it's a good system that everyone should venture into, like you said, the starting small is the best anyone can do. And once you start, you understand your system and how it runs. So going on, Maybe in the last scale, it's easier because you already understand the system. Yeah. Now, yeah. So the next question is like now, for within Africa, apart from South Africa, is there any other country you know that does the smart farming maybe more commercial? Yes. Yeah, so um, I I was fortunate enough to to go um to 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 Europe under Riggs One, which is a seed company um to the netherlands and we met this uh these farmers smart farmers hydroponic farmers from senegal that are, are doing amazing um plant raisers um in tanzania um so i'm seeing africa really grab smart farming by the horns and it's exciting and um yeah, I hope to visit them actually one day. Yeah. But it's definitely something that I was like, wow, you know, um, this is not, this is not the conventional um, narrative. Yeah. People will be like, Africa has the best climate. Africa, you blessed with the best climate in the world, and here you are wanting to protect plants. <laughs> you know and it's like a, it's a european concept and all these um all these uh, narratives that we we have to deal with as smart farmers and um to see africans be like but this system is not meant to take away uh our natural systems our soil uh growing systems but this is another method that also does um does the contribution of food security and food production at a much faster rate, at a much quicker rate, and at a much um, efficient rate. And I think, you know, we'd be really selling ourselves short if we don't embrace that in Africa. Um, so uh, I'm seeing a lot of Africans do it. You're also doing it. You're in Nigeria. Um, who else is doing it that I know? David Soilist, is doing it. He's in Zimbabwe. You know, Soilless plants. Everyone is is getting into it in Africa, and um, it, for me, uh, it's really exciting. I can't wait to actually go out in in Africa and really visit so many um, other Africans doing it and seeing how we can exchange ideas and and, and grow this industry more. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, a, it's a nice one and a good initiative for everyone to we venture into and see how it grows across Africa. Now, like you said, like not coming to rule off our traditional farming system, it's either to complement what we already have. Now, with the yes. smart farming system mm. complementing with the yeah. traditional farming, we are sure of food security in and out of season. Now, the mm. traditional system of farming has the limitation on the seasonal product. Maybe there's a time a product will be in abundance, and the next season, it's the scarcity of that product. So, with the far smart farming, it complements when this is out of stock, the smart farmers are there to also serve the market. And this would also reduce the import of some of the products 
from the Europe and other uh, continents. Like most times, you see most of the African countries, we still import foods from most of the Europe and uh, some other countries. And based on the youth smart farming, so during season and out of season, they have these products available. As compared to us, I just have to wait for till it gets to an abundant season, this way we get the product. And after yeah. then, it's over. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good one. So as we say, is there anything you would maybe in the component system you want persons to know about? Hello, you hear me? Hi, uh, sorry, David, you cut the, I'm sorry, Kenneth, you cut the a bit. Okay. I, I, was, yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I was like, I thought it was my network. Okay, in the company system, now, currently now, so are there are things you would want to really advise new persons that want to venture into it, or persons that are already doing it in a small scale on how to, in a scale of? My advice to a person who's doing it small scale and on how to, how they can scale up. Was that the question, uh, Kenneth? Yeah, so I said, yeah, the advice on how, so for persons that want to start, or persons that maybe already doing the small scale, what are the advice on them on how to Oh, but, yeah. yeah. My advice would be uh, to, if they, they need this uh, three-point check system, right? If you're a small scale, Smart, smart farmer. I'm guessing you are a hectare, not even a hectare, you're probably less than that. Um, and you want to scale up, you need to ensure that you understand, you can teach smart farming. You, you can host training centers or training um, demonstrations at your farm. That's number one. Number two, you need to ensure that you understand your system. You can sell your system to the next person in another region and they can buy it from you. And the last thing that you need to ensure that you know in and out is actually how to be a grower, that you can farm this with your eyes closed. You know exactly what needs um, to happen when you have um, issues. You know exactly what your fish need when they are gasping for air. You know exactly what your, your uh, the amount of pressure oxygen that you need, clean water that you need, you understand your water flows, you understand your parameters, you understand your, your pH, what to do when it's high or it's low, you understand your temperatures, you understand your salinity, you understand how to, if you're doing hatchery, you understand that process from um, eggs to fingerlings to uh, mature fish. So once you understand those three, and now you want to scale up, I would assume that you have the data for everything that you've been doing. My advice now would be to um, start start writing an ebook. Write an ebook with all that you have learned. Um, start um, commercializing yourself at the scale that you are. Right, that's what people need to understand. That smart farming. At the end of the day, we are facing uh, a challenge or rather an opportunity to teach people that this is something that works. This is something that you can do as small as you are. So I think, you know, before you even look at um, investors or investments or upscaling in terms of, because um, most of these smart farmers are getting foreign investments because obviously Europe will be very attracted to um, smart farming. So you will get a lot of um, foreign um, interests uh, uh, provided that you market yourself very well. But at the end of the day, what I've noticed is our biggest um, responsibility as smart farmers is that we need to be um, spreading the word. So I need, I think that there's so much potential in just actualizing yourself where you are and, you know, um, funding will surely find you. And I know that's the goal. You know, you want to grow big, you want to, you know, uh, be commercial, you want at least like five hectares filled with just tunnels and tunnels and tunnels. Uh, but um, I really feel like where you are, um, improve on that, work on that, be the best at that uh, with the three fundamentals. Start training, start earning some sort of money with uh, your trainings. Um, you know, make sure that you are accredited, you can be accredited to give out trainings yourself. You know, people should, you know, pay you for your knowledge because smart farming is always R&D. It's forever research and development that you are doing yourself. Um, I was having a conversation the other day and they were saying that farmers need to own their data. So work on that. Work on that before you even sell it or sell an idea. 
um that that really would be my advice um that's what i would definitely be doing um but I, I don't think people should have any trouble if you're a smart farmer and you're doing everything right i don't think you should be having any trouble uh, attracting um some sort of support financially to upscale i i could be wrong but it's it's such an attractive low risk model there's there's no way i haven't seen anyone say oh you know i'm still stuck with my uh hectare and no one you know cares about my business if you're marketing yourself in the right way if you're approaching the right people you should you should be upscaling very soon you should be installing solar panels you should be installing um you know sensors and and um and, and all these things and oxygen tanks it, it's really very very lucrative um you just need to position yourself and be ready for it okay well thank you very much so you made a comment he own farmers who own their data so why yes you own data is, yeah it's easy to teach the next person about the processes that you make is basically on personal research now since the business is at its infancy stage across africa so most of the stuff are research now like you mentioned some of the plants that can survive in the hydro aquaponic system now with sufficient research could come out that there are other plants that can also be done within the aquaponic systems too because we pay more experimenting things and trying out some stuff now lastly we'll just look at what are the opportunities like you mentioned one that before you would them of scaling up once you start with training persons on what you've learned over a long period of time, it's a huge opportunity also in the smart farming system. Since the system is still coming up soon, so there's a lot of opportunities. You being the first forerunners of the system across Africa. So from apart from the maybe trainings, so what are different opportunities some persons can get within the aquaponic system? Okay, so in terms of the opportunities that people can get with the aquaponic system is, first of all, owning your own smart farm and owning um, your own data, obviously. Um, and it would be wonderful. You know, like I said, uh, systems are different. You know, Kenneth, yeah. your, your, your smart farming system can be designed completely different to mine. And you have 50 uh, catfishes and I have 10 catfishes. You know, you can't tell me that your model is going to work with me. You need to be feeding your fish more. You need more oxygen um, intake on your fish because they're going to be, um, you know, secreting, excreting more. So our systems are going to be different. You know, if someone can find some sort of ratio on sell a book, I would probably buy it, you know. So it's very important to, to, to start on your own data. And um, opportunities that I see is... Um, uh, urban farms everywhere. You know, I see people relying less on, um, or let me not say relying less. I see people being more conscious about food production um, because farming is now being brought closer to, to the cities. Farming is now, here in South Africa, we have rooftop uh, hydroponic farmers. Most of them are females, you know, uh, which is fantastic. It's, it's, it's very groundbreaking, um, you know. So people are setting up rooftop urban farms on biggest malls here in South Africa. They are, they are, their market is downstairs, you know. So uh, farming is now getting closer to consumers. Yeah, which is a uh, which is it's it's great because for farmers we are now um very closer to our consumers we can now you know educate people more about food safety food security uh you know uh people need to understand that if we're if i'm saying i'm pesticide free you are gonna get a little you know aphid or a little bug you know but it's it's not that i'm not a good farmer you know, it's not that I'm reckless, you know, so it's people now understanding um, farming much better because it's coming closer to the people because it's being grown in urban areas. There are a lot of urban farmers coming up. So I feel like that gap of farmer and consumer is, is, is getting to a close which is exciting um and I feel like the opportunities, like I said, you can really uh, package your your smart farm if you're using um uh the green labels and you're pesticide free and you don't use any harsh chemicals you can be in the organic market space which means premium premium um um uh profits 
Um, and the opportunities I see is that it's, it's, it's exciting for us spring chickens you know it's exciting for young people mm -hmm. to be joining agriculture um yeah. in in a way that is is no, no longer looking like a burden no longer looking yeah. like um you know uh, how can i even put it it's no longer looking like you are you know working all day getting sunburns yeah. and earning less this yeah. is a lucrative business I, you can be 18 years old, you can be 60 years old. Mm -hmm. This is a lucrative business. So this is a, a, a six, this is a career, you know? Yeah. So these are opportunities that I see coming up for Africans. Um, it's, it's, I think in five years, honestly, we'll be having a different conversations and that's how yeah. fast this market is growing. So there's plenty of opportunities, Kenneth. I'm sure you can agree uh, with me on this one. Yeah. Yeah, so the opportunities are vast, like you've seen now. It does not discriminate in terms of the age. You can be 16, yeah. you get into it. You can be 60, you get into it. Male or female, there is no gender yes. bias when it comes to the farming system. Mm. Now, since it's not a strength work, mm. okay, oh, I need a physical strength to do the work. Like we, we talk about the old farmers, they walk like elephants and they eat like ants. Yeah. Yeah, but mm. one of the old, old traditional farmers, they do the hard work. You imagine someone feeding two acres, three acres of land, and most of the people that make the profit are most of the middlemen that come to their farm, buy it and take it to the urban cities. Like you made mention earlier, now the farm are in the urban cities. They are now closer to the consumers. Not before we have to bring it from the villages yeah. down to the urban city. We have the farmers yeah. and the consumers in the same place. So it's easy for you to educate the consumer on what the product is all about. There are most, yes. of, you know, most of these middlemen, they are just profit oriented. Okay. I'm going to the village, I'll get a product, I come to sell. They don't really know much about the product. But for a smart farmer, you went through all the process, you own your data, you did some research. So it's easier to really educate the person. Oh, these are the benefits yeah. of maybe taking this crop, these are the benefits of taking, buying these products, and it's easier yeah. for the, for the consumers. And also, you made mention about the healthy living. Now, there are so much. Uh, awareness on eating healthy foods, on avoidance of some of these uh, fertilizers that has, that are cancerous to the human body. So there are so many uh, stuff that have been going on around it. So with the smart farming, it helps solve most of all these issues you know, around maybe the healthy food. So now you're eating healthy and you're eating good, uh, fresh product, not you're waiting for it to come from down. And also the logistics yeah. issues. You know, we, we are faced with logistics issues of moving crop products from one exactly. center yeah. down to a, a different region. So that is also a major issue that is that plague the traditional farming. But with the smart farming that is closer to you, that's as maybe so also to the market. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 that's part of the issues of the logistics and places. So people can eat it fresh and the product is being maybe harvested, not waiting for maybe months for it to get not waiting for shorter shorter cold uh chain storage uh fresh very fresh like i said uh people are farming on rooftops yeah. you know you have it now you get it within less than 30 minutes you know so it's things like that that is really changing the way uh agri the agriculture industry is is operating so we can only get excited you know we're in the right sector so now there's a question I didn't ask about the shelf life of some of these products. Now the shelf life of most of these products as compared to the soy, traditional farming, are they the same in terms of the shelf life? You know, we've done trials actually. So we've harvested all our lines that we, we, we have and then we put it in the fridge just to see, you know, if someone buys it, like how long will it stay fresh for? And our shelf life is, Round about uh, uh, a week, a week, and I I think that's that's pretty good. Um, and I know that with the seed companies that we're using, they're being very innovative now. Because remember, with smart farming, lettuce is your your main your main line of of what you are producing. So seed companies that the ones that we are using, they're coming with innovative uh, seed technology where the they are reducing the pinking of the leaves you know sometimes uh the midrib of like your lettuce becomes pink 
and then it becomes uh well if it's yeah it becomes pink and then it, it it's gonna it's the shelf life is decreasing it's going to spoil so they are doing they are innovating the the, the seeds um so you, people can also check out seed companies what their seed company of choice uh, are doing in terms of increasing shelf life um but um i think the model of uh, uh hydroponics uh aquaponics and smart farming and urban farming is 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 really um more uh centralized so we're closer to the city so i really feel like it's it's good for for us to kind of still continue the model of freshness um i'm, I'm not so i'm not too sure i'm i'm, I'm keen of increasing <laughs> um shelf life i think if we're going to be in the cities farmers must buy fresh produce um immediately and eat it and consume it immediately. But if people want um, that technology where, you know, they buy their lettuces and they want to eat it in two weeks, seed companies are really pushing that, which is fantastic, uh, which is great. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one, like you would mention. So it's something everyone should venture into. Like we in Africa, now you made mention about the opportunities of our training. So like you said, in the next five years, the conversation about smart farming would be would taking a different tone altogether. Because by then, yeah. we have persons that have centers that organize seminars, trainings, and the consumers will also be educated about the products. So they, are, they, they now see the need to go for products from these uh, smart farming systems and different training centers will come up that will guide persons about the need for this to come up. So we see Maybe like now, part of what we are doing today is more like the sensitization for persons that want to maybe go into the smart farming system. Now, I know a whole lot of persons will come across these videos and that will just give them like a boost. Okay, let us start something. And in the long run, like you say, the next five years, it will be a whole stuff all together. Like the smartphone system. Now, the smartphone system has made a lot of things very easy for persons. You can sit out, you can say I'm a farmer and you're in your home and you're monitoring what is going on around the farm. You can be getting data at real time, checking everything. If there's an issue, you can run them here to maybe set it up. So it's a nice system and it's something which is like you said, everyone should get excited about. Yeah. Yeah. So we shut them down for the stream today. Like I said, this is this is stream should be continued. Maybe we want to come back in the next time for a video like this, it will be a different tool altogether. Maybe we have different persons that have already started the business together. So what was the last word before we shut down for tonight? Um sorry, what was that? The the last um are you asking me for last comments? Yes. Oh okay. So um in terms of smart farming my last comments will definitely be that it is the future and um i am I'm, I'm i'm pleading to young farmers to really look at um, agriculture in a different light agriculture is is a career path and i i hope that you know the more they see um, smart farmers take up the space they realize that you know this is something that um looks like them especially if it's more africans coming to the space smart farming looks like them there is plenty of opportunities for them to still be farmers even if they're in the cities or even if they don't have big you know uh portions of land you know because also land in south africa is a you know controversial topic so yeah. we can still be farmers we can still you know be commercial um with uh the little that we have and by little i'm talking um you know five hectares 10 hectares is, is even a dream for a smart farmer so i really feel like look into it uh work on equipping yourself with knowledge uh, experience is, is priceless. Um, you know, watch Kenneth's uh, show. He's doing very well with his YouTube channel to really share information, um, follow the right people, um, you know, shadow the right people. This is really something that you can do if you're really passionate about it. And, um, yeah, I hope I, I've shared, you know, just based on my experience, what I know. But if anyone would like to know anything further, they're more than welcome to reach out to me. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Kenneth, for, for inviting me. It's always nice to actually be here and talk to a fellow uh, smart farmer. You know, it's like, it's really, I feel like I'm speaking to an, my old friend. We we <laughs> get it. You, you get what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Really, I appreciate it. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining the live stream. And it's been an educative session. Yeah, someone even made a comment. Say thanks for all the...
Technics, Vise, Andri, Empa Andri from in, not Nigerian. So there are a lot of persons that drop their comments. This okay, somewhere from Nigeria. We have Omega. Omega, she says, she, uh, Tanya is in Germany. So we have different persons that joined us from short relief from Nigeria. So we have different persons joining us from different regions from the small summit. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity, as you see it. So as you see, the experience is priceless. So it's, once you experiment, you know, most, most of the time, the fear of, okay, it's expensive, it's this, it's that, but starting small, like you said, once you start small, yeah. you do a bit of research, and in the next five years, mm -hmm. we'll be talking a different tune in the smart farming across Africa. Now, one thing I like about our smart farming is, well, now, since you say there's a rooftop farming, so most times you can innovate, experiment, and see how to maybe model a farm that in years to come might not need a large land space, you can just do a system that's good. Don't require much of the land, but has a large output from the products. Like I said, we are experimenting and it is still growing and it will be growing better. So thank you everyone for joining us in the show tonight. It's been an educated one from Google. And hopefully we'll be having her once again to share some of her experience. Okay, Andre says he's from Angola. Oh, okay. That's nice. Um, hello to everyone. And um, yeah, I hope to join your session again. Happy to share, happy to learn from everyone. So thanks again, Kenneth. Yeah, so have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you. Yeah.